Part 4. So you've learned the beat patterns that I taught in the first three videos of this series. If you haven't, it's probably a good idea for you to go back and check those videos out, or if you're the kind of person who laughs in the face of danger, just keep watching. You can't wait to thrash away to your favourite rock songs. But how are you going to navigate through those songs? They've got all those bits in them. They've got an intro and a verse and a chorus. How long are those bits? How long is the pre-verse? Well, we measure the length of the bits of songs in bar numbers. A bar is just a repeating sequence of beats. Uh, in most rock and pop music, it's going to be four beats in every bar. So one and two and three and four and is one bar. And so all of our beat patterns will fit into that framework. And when we listen to songs, we'll start to notice that the different parts of the songs have different lengths and we need to know how to navigate through those because the intro might not have any drums in it, uh, the verse might have a slightly different beat to the chorus and you need to punctuate the changes from this part of the song to the next. What we're going to learn how to do today to help you navigate is counting bars and specifically counting a four bar phrase. It looks like this. One and two and three and four. Two and two and three and four and three and two. Three and four and four and two and three and four and one. Two and three and four and two. Two and three and four and three and two and three and four. Four and two and three and four and oh. What did I just do there? Instead of just counting one and two and three and four and one and three and four and one and two and three and four and which will allow me to get lost, you know, if I play more than a couple of bars, I'll forget how many bars I played. So what I'm doing is substituting the one of each bar with the bar number, meaning bar one, one and two and three and four. Bar two, two and two and three and four. Bar three, three and two and three and four. And obviously bar four, four and two and three and four and. You need to memorize how to count this way so that you can start playing and counting in four bar phrases. Once you can count four bars easily, you'll find you can count as many bars as you need to. It's not particularly difficult. And realistically, you'll probably end up counting in chunks of four and eight a lot of the time. So let's count a few four bar phrases without playing anything first. It'll make life a lot easier if you get used to this and even memorize it before you come to the kit. Uh, I'm going to provide a sheet so you can read it to yourself as well. And you can practice counting this uh, wherever you happen to be, uh, just using your mind. Here we go. One and two and three and four and two and two and three and four. Three and two and three and four and four and two and three four and one and two and three and four and two and two and three four and three and two and three and four and four and two three and four and one and two and three and four. Two and two and three and four and three and two and three and four. Four and two and three and four and one. Two and three and four and two and two and three and four and three. Two and three and four and four and two and three and four and done. Let us now play this on the drum kit. We're going to pick any beat that you like, but play whichever one you find is easiest and we're gonna play and count at the same time, like this. I'll even give a little count in. One and two and three and four and one. Two and three and four and two. Two and three and four and three and two and three. Four and four and two and three and four and one. Two and three and four and two. Two and three and four and three and two and three, four and four and two and three, four and one. Don't forget a nice light hi hat. Three and four and punchy bass. Two and three and snap a snare. Three and two and three and four and four and two, three and four and one. Two and three and four and two and two and three and four and. 
and three and four and four and two and three and four and done. Now, when we're using this in a musical setting, when we're playing a song, we're most often going to punctuate uh, the movement from one part of the song to the next. Remember, we're learning how to count the bars so that we can reference how many bars there are in each part of the song and we can act accordingly, which means we might want to play one groove and then change to another groove. We might know that we need to play a fill moving us from one part of the song to another. And very importantly, and in many, many cases, although not all cases, we're going to punctuate the movement from one part of a song to another with a crash. And uh, that's the, the second component of today's video, which is playing a crash. Now, um, in order to play a crash, if you haven't done it before, the first thing you need to know is that in most cases to obtain a suitably dramatic crash sound, you want to hit the, uh, the cymbal with the shoulder of the stick. That's this bit where it starts to taper. And you want to hit the cymbal on the edge like so. Now the digital abomination here is not going to respond in the normal way of a cymbal, but that should be more or less the sound that you get out of your crash if you hit it correctly. And you notice I'm playing the bass at the same time. Uh, just uh, slightly aside, when you hit the cymbal, strike it with a glancing blow. So that means that you're going to move your stick slightly sideways one way or the other. It obtains a good sound. Again, this thing doesn't care, but a normal cymbal will get a good sound. And also it's uh, nicer to the cymbal, you're less likely to hurt it if you strike it with a glancing blow, slightly sideways. Anyway, so we're going to punctuate the beginning of our four bar phrase by striking the crash. And we're going to do that in substitution for the first note that we would ordinarily play on the hi-hat. So if we're going one and two and three and four and, the crash just replaces that first hi-hat. Everything else is the same. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and it doesn't hurt it's a small digression but to maybe practice that movement a little bit one and if you've never done this before it might feel a bit weird one and so you're politely introducing your hand to this movement one and Let's you focus a little bit on the mechanics. One and. You don't have to do it all day. One and. Just get yourself a little bit comfortable with that, okay? Then we're going to start our next round of four bar phrases with the crash. And we're going to hit the crash on the first note of every four bar phrase. Like this. One and two and three and four and. One and two and and two and two and three and four and three and two and punchy bass four and four snappy snare three and four and one and two and fluffy hi hat four and two and two and and four and three and two and three and four and and two and three and four and crash and two Three and four and two and two and three and four and three and two and three four and four and two and three and four and done. Okay, jolly good. The next thing we're going to look at is when we're playing the We Will Rock You option with the bass on the one and the and, we have two bass drum notes in succession. When we play at the very beginning of our four bar phrase, we're hitting the crash and then we hit the hi hat on the and. One and. And your body might not be 100% happy to do that at first. One and. So that when you come around to your crash bit of your four bar phrase, you're going to forget to play the bass drum on the and after the one. One and. One and. So you do that a little bit just to introduce your limbs to the idea. So that's what you want them to do. One and. One and. Okay? Again, you don't have to do this all day. Just a few. One and. Will probably help you get where you need to go. And then we're going to try and play some 
four bar phrase. And don't worry if you mess this up a few times, it's all part of the game. We have to just slowly get used to these movements and sort of coordination challenges, I guess. Here we go. One and two and three and four and two and two and three and four and three and two and three and four and four and two and three and four and and two and three and four and two and two and and four and three and two and three and four and four and two and three and four and let's change the bass pattern and three and four and two two and three and four and three and two and three and four and four and two and and four and one and two Three and four and two and two and three and four. Improvise three, two and three and four and and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and two and two and three, four and three and two and and four and four and two and three and four and done so there you go counting a four bar phrase no one really wants to do it at first but i guarantee it will really help you connect with your sense of time it'll help you develop a deeper understanding of the different patterns that you can play in rock beats and it'll help you uh, just learn how to focus really well on what you're doing and uh, well, there's loads of benefits actually I need to make one of those like list of things videos about the subject I recommend you practice counting the bars and playing the four different beat patterns and also improvising with some different bass drum patterns based on those beats thank you very much for watching this let me know in the comments if you found this helpful, useful, if there's something I missed or I could explain better. Um, I'm really interested to hear what you think about this. Hit the subscribe button if you'd like to be notified of the next video I make, which is going to be adding a fill to this whole glorious sequence. Thanks again. Now go away and practice.